Počtovane predstavnici na mediju. Distinguished members of the press, distinguished citizens, distinguished guests, good afternoon and welcome at today's press conference where the Minister of Environment and Physical Planning, Nasser Nureddini, the Executive Director of Technolpin, Mr. Erich Kummerer, will inform about the plans for development of the ski center Popova Shapka. Meredita dhe mirësere në konferencën për shtyp në të cilën Ministri Ambientit jetësor dhe planifikimit të hapsinorë zotin Asen Nuredini dhe drejtori ekzekutiv i kompahnis Tekno Alpin zotin Ehri Gumerer do të informojnë për planet për zhvillimin e qendrës së skimit kodre djelit. Fillin më ishtë dhe drejtot Ministri Nuredini, urbanu zotin Ministri. Falem derit, po që të vëni me djur. Distinguished members of the press, distinguished citizens, distinguished Mr. Ehri Gumerer, Thank you for your presence at today's press conference organized uh, to fulfill the promise and to present the public with the bidder for implementation of the development project for the ski center Popova Shapka, the company Technolpin, and their investment and development plans. The local team Popova Shapka is within the frames of the newly established national park, Sharplanina. During the zoning, we foresaw for this area to be a buffer zone because the conditions required that. Our intention and our efforts are directed at maximum protection of the natural values while providing conditions for social and economic development as well as an opportunity to make our natural beauties attractive and European to attract tourists from the whole world, to generate income for the country and to open new jobs and new economic opportunities for the citizens. The purpose of the protection of natural values is not to turn the protected areas into museums of the nature, but to provide sustainable management. Popova Shapka is a tourist center in the Republic of North Macedonia, located on 1,700 meters above sea level, and there is an opportunity for skiing and other winter sports during the colder season, but also enjoying the classic summer mountain sports thanks to the numerous trekking trails and mountain roads. We are looking at, a, at an older ski center where the foundations were laid during the 1950s, whereas in the period between 1970 and 1980, the ski zones was, zone was constructed with ski lifts and ski pads as well as the first hotels. Unfortunately, for more than two decades, no one has invested in modernization of the existing capacities or expanding the current ones. So, for that reason, the locality is now outdated. The existing ski lifts are old. There is no snowmaking system. And consequently, the ski season is conditioned by the weather. That is, skiing is only possible in conditions of heavy snowfalls, and the ski trails are mostly connected without any adaptation of the terrain. The cable car with the city of Tetovo is no longer usable. So, the access to the ski center is now possible only by using vehicles. Most of the hotel capacities are outdated, whereas the services connected to food and beverage outlets are scarce. The higher mountain parts lack mountain homes. In general, the tourism on our mountains, although it marks a positive trend, it has a strong need of massive readaptation and renovation of the existing capacities so that they can meet the current quality standards required by the market. Because if this does not happen, they are in danger of disappearing. 
During some pastimes, Popova Shapka was a challenge for top names of the ski sports. Unfortunately, years of non-investing led to grave lagging and underutilization of the numerous possibilities and capacities for development of tourism offered by this mountain zone that is highly valued on both European and world level. The initial idea was based on two presumptions. The first one, for the country to bear the related costs and to consequently manage it through a dependent company. And the second one, to transfer the activities to a third private entity possessing funds, organizational and technological know-how for construction and management of ski centers. It was an immense pleasure to receive this serious bid by a renowned European company from South Tyrol Technalpen, because this company is a world leader in production and installation of artificial snow systems, recognized expert for design of ski terrains and ski zones. Now the minister will continue in Albania and he will give the, the same speech. Organizuam për të përmbush përmëtimin dhe për të prezentuar para publikut fërtuesin për zbatimin e projektit për zhvillimin e qendrës së skimit kodra djelit. Kompania Techno Alpin si dhe investim dhe planet zhvillomore që i ka afruar. Mëndodhja kodra së djelit është të mbrenda parket komptar të malit shar, gjatë zonimit të parket nacional. Ne kemi planifikuar që kjo zonat e jetë në brez të mbrojtës ose buffer zonë si qëquar, sëpse e kërkon kushtet për të zhvillim. Synimi dhe përpjekje tona kanë për qëllim brojtje në sama të madhe për të vlerëve natyrore, për një kësisht edhe sigurimin e kushtëve për zhvillimin socioekonomik. Kjo në kupton mundësin që bukurit tona natyrore të jene tërheqise, evropiane edhe të tërheqen turist nga gjithë bota, të sielin të ardhura shtetit dhe të hapin vene të reja pune, si dhe të ofrojnë në mundësi të reja ekonomike për qitetarët. Qëllimin brojtje së vlerëve natyrore nuk është të shtëndrimi i zonëve të mbrojtëra në muze të natyres, por sigurimi menajimit të qëndrueshëm. Koda gjelit është një qendrë turistike në Republikën e Macedonisë e Verijut, vëndosur në mbi 1.700 metra në nivelin e djetit, e cila ofron mundësit të shijohet në natyrë skijimi dhe sport të tjera dimërore gjatë sezonit të ftohet, si dhe të shijohon në sport të klasike verore malore, fale në umrit të shtijive dhe rrugëve malore. Ashtë një qenër skimi mjafte vjetër, ku themelet e ka e para filuan të nërtohon gjatë viteve të pes tjeta, të shekuj të galuar, ndërsa në vitet 1978-1980, undërtua zona skimit me ski liftet, shtigjet e skive dhe hotelet e para. Fatke qësisht, për mua ma shumë se dekada, me shumë dekada nuk është të bërë asë një investim në modernizimin apo zjerimin objektive egzistuese, andaj e kilokacion të një është i vjetëruar dhe i pra pëmbetur. Ski liftet egzistues janë të vjetëruar, nuk ka sistem për borë artificial dhe rritëshmi sezoni skimit kështë zohët nga moti. Për skimi bëhët vetëm kur ka reshit të dendura borë, ndësa shtigjet e skimit janë kryshisht të lidura pa përshtatje me terenin. Telefriku ose gondola, si që quem, me qytetin e të tovës nuk është në funksion, andaj qasje në qendrën e skimit është të mundur vetëm duke përdorur atom jetë. Shumicat objekteve të lirë janë të vjetura, dërsa shëbimet në lidhje me pikët u shimi dhe pijeve janë të pakta, dërsa në pjesët e lartë të malore nuk ka shtëpje malore. Në përgjithësi, turizmi në maletona, ndonë se në ka një trend pozitiv, ka një nevoj të madhe për repërshtatje dhe renovima sift objekteve egzistuese me qilim për mbushje në standardeve aktualet e cilësis që kërkon të regu, sepse pa e bërë këtë, e zikojmë të dhe gjithukje në kësaj tjendrës. Duk unisër nga këto fakte, ne filuam në i studim për fizibilitet të projektit për inovimi në skiqenërës e kodës djelit. Edhe në të koluarën ka qenë sfidë për emrat kryesore të sportëve dimëror, por fatkesisht, mungesa fatë gjatë e mestimeve ka siel një vones serioze, mos fritëzim të mundësive dhe kapacitetve të 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 shumëta për zhvillimin e turizmi që ofron ki lokacion malor të jetë i vlerësuar si në nivel evropian ashtu edhe atë botëror. 
i dhe fristar u bazuar në dy supozime. Njëra është që shtetit të përbaloje kostët për katëse dhe më pas të menagjojën ato në përmjet një kompanije filiale, ose supozime i ditë është që aktivitetet të besohon një subjektit të tretë privat që të tronë burime financiare, një hori organizative dhe teknologjike për nëftimin dhe më pas menagjimin e qendrave të skijimit. Ishte një kënatësi e madhe që arritëm të merim një ofertë serios nga një kompanije njohër e vërpjan nga Tiroli Jugut nga Italia, Tekno Alpin, e cila është lideri në botërorë në prodhimin dhe instalimin e sistemeve të borës artificial një ekspert i njohër në projektimin e tereneve dhe zonave për skijim. Këtu gjë apë fjallën të rektorit e ekzekutiv të kompanijës, sotëri Erik Kumërë, i cojë do të prezentoje kompanijën dhe zhjidhe të ufërtuësi në mënyrë Now I would like to give the floor to the executive director, Mr. Gumerer, who will present the company and uh, the offered solutions in more detail. Please, you may take the floor. Thank you. As the minister said, now we'll hear from Mr. Erich Gumerer, the executive director of the company Digna Alpin. Good morning to everybody and a uh, big thank you to the go uh, North Macedonian government uh, and especially to the Minister Narodini for this opportunity uh, to, uh, first of all, to present our company and second, to uh, show and to uh, present our, our project here in Popova Shapka. Thank you very much, Herr Minister. I want to for this good opportunity to invite us to here to present here. Und äh, ich hoffe, dass äh, wir Sie auch von unserem Projekt begeistern können. Äh, vorrei anche äh, salutare äh, l'Ambasciata Italiana, in nome di Mario De Rosa, che äh, äh, ha fatto, äh, è venuto a trovarci qua e a, anche a dare tutto il nostro appoggio per il futuro. Grazie. Ok, uh, adesso uh, I want to introduce shortly our company. First of all, uh, my name is Eric Kummer, and uh, I am um, one of the founders of the company and uh, owner and the general manager of the company. So we are based in the north of Italy, in the Alps, um, and normally everybody says, okay, Italy, what is going on for skiing? But uh, probably you know, uh, we are in the heart of the Dolomites, and the Dolomites is the biggest ski resort worldwide. There is one ski resort with 1,200 kilometers of slopes and 450 lifts, all connected with one ski pass and one organization. That is unique worldwide. And so that's even the reason why we are located there. Because, and all these slopes, all these slopes, 1,200 kilometers of slopes, are covered with technical snowmaking. We are on the south of the Alps. And all the ski resorts need to, um, uh, efficient snowmaking, otherwise it's not possible to run this uh, as a commercial business. Our mission is to guarantee first-class quality snow for the most successful snow business worldwide. This is very important. Because skiing changed a lot. It's not only the climate changing, but the ski changed. The, the skiers want to have uh, a better snow quality and they want to have the best slopes. And this is worldwide the same. It's because we, make, we are making snowmaking everywhere. There are no more, no more ski resorts without snowmaking, successfully ski resorts worldwide. Okay, we started our company 1984, but the real company, uh, Techno Alpine, we started later on 1990. And then we uh, and uh, from a really manually system at that time, and up to now to, we end up 2022 with uh, high technology systems. Uh, we have running more than 120,000 snow guns worldwide. We have uh, uh, more than 1,000 system integrated in our softwares, and we can manage all these, or we can so see all these guns worldwide on, uh, uh, on our central platform. But this is what is Technopin. Technopin is not only snowmaking; it's snowmaking, but we are planning, developing uh, all all the systems. 
Then, uh, because snow, gun, uh, snow systems is not only the snow gun, to, to have this, uh, these systems you need water piping, electricity, uh, pump stations, lakes. There is a lot of things that you need to, to, uh, to make the snow. This is one. Then another part from the technology is the indoor snow making, this, that we provide even snow for the indoor. That means, for, for example, retail shops, uh, um, uh, ski malls, uh, whatever, spa, and so on. Then another product that we developed is the firefighting. Um, we use the same technology that for snowmaking, we use this uh, technology for firefighting. And you cannot find big cities worldwide, they have not our fi fi firefighting systems. For example, um, Istanbul, uh, Shanghai, Beijing, uh, what, else, what else? All the big cities. And we have another one with um, uh, uh, dust fighting and, uh, and, and so on. And the last uh, is um, uh, ice surfing machines that we are even providing worldwide. Okay, uh, short views about the indoor snowmaking, firefighting again, dust, odor control, mechanical evaporation. And uh, the last one is these ice surfing machines. Okay, these are our headquarters in Bolzano. We have two big buildings. One is the uh, um, offices and one is the production building. Uh, how is our organization? Uh, we have uh, subsidiaries in all main markets. That means in the United States, in China, uh, in Sweden, and uh, in, in the main countries in Europe, French, uh, and so on. And then we have our um, uh, uh, trading, trading partners. Totally, you can see the subsidiary. Um, we have uh, even, for example, in our subsidiary in China, we have a production for the local market. And otherwise, we have our, for example, uh, in, in Austria, this is our headquarter even for the spare parts. We have more than 700 people working worldwide for the group. We are investing minimum 6 million in research and development every year. We are doing 100% of the pro uh, production for the snow, uh, snow guns in, in our factory in, in, in Bolzano. And we are, uh, since 20 years, the market leader in snowmaking worldwide. And we have a market share that is more than 60% worldwide. We are producing more or less 5,000 in the average of snow guns per year. And, of course, we have the full range of the products. We are, we are delivering everything what is needed for the, uh, for, the, for the systems. Of course, our servicing is consulting, planning, production, implementation, service. And we have 2,400 customers worldwide in 55 countries. So in nearly every country where it's possible to ski, we have uh, some, uh, some system from technology. All the big players, there are big players, we say that they have more than 2 million skiers per year. Two, more than 2 million skiers per year are all our, our customers. It's Ischgl, Alta Badia, Valtaron, Sölden, all the big ones worldwide. And these are the biggest projects from this year. So this year, the biggest project this year we did in uh, Georgia. Georgia, we made a system with, uh, the, uh, with 30 kilometers. We built this in five months. It's, it's new, it's even for us a new record. But we, you can see we did big project worldwide. United, Sta uh, United States, Yellowstone Park, in, in, in Argentina, Cathedral, in China, everywhere, everywhere. So, uh, what else is important for the big events? So, for example, the next, uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the coming winter, we have the World Championship race in Courchevel. It's done 100% on techno snow. In um, 2025, we have the World Championship in Salpa Hintergem. It's 100% of techno -pin. And not but least is um, China. We had the last Olympic Games in China, they were only on technical snow, 100%. All the, all the races were on technical snow, and all these were done by Technopin, 100%. And people were very happy, even with all these in, uh, restrictions about Corona. It was not easy. 
Okay, so here you see the facilities. Okay, so now we, come, we are coming to the real point, and this is Popova Shapka. And many of you will ask us oh, why, why Technolpin is coming to uh, North Macedonia to investing in, a, in a such a, a project. I can tell you that um, I personally know uh, not all the ski resorts, but nearly all resorts worldwide, because we are wo I am working since uh, more than 30 years in this business. We are traveling, we are visiting our customers, we are always on the road, and we see what is working and what is not working in the ski resort and what is the future. And uh, we could find out that this uh, ski resort, Popova Shapka, has had a great future. It's in the middle of the West Balkany. There is a huge potential. It's on a higher elevation than the usual, the, the ski resorts over here. It's important even for the future. And there is a good base. We are uh, nearby to the airport. Uh, there is uh, still um, people, they, um, there is a lot of potential for the tourists. I'm, uh, and this is why we said, okay, this could be a good opportunity. And uh, if we have this, and we uh, now we hope that we can find a final agreement, then this is a pleasure because we see what could happen uh, in, in, a sub, in a place uh, like this. We have similar um, uh, situations, for example, everybody knows Bansko or Bukovel in Ukraine or, um, or Kupónik in Serbia. So uh, um, we see uh, a huge potential for this country and for this key resort. That's why we are here and we believe in this, in belief in this investment. So, uh, Nemanja Dogo, he will present uh, a little bit our plans uh, for, this, uh, for this project. Thank you very much, Mr. Gumolo. Vielen Dank, Herr Minister, und danke für die Chance, dass ich das Projekt Popova Schapka vorstellen darf. Vigatia anche al nostro ambasciato di essere venuti. So, uh, I will only introduce myself. I'm Nemanja Jogo. The name came from the Balkans. It's from Sarajevo. I was born there, but more than 13 years I'm living in South Tyrol, so I'm more a South Tyrolian guy or Italian guy than a Bosnian guy. So, we will start. Uh, this is now, you can see the Popova Shaka. This is the ski resort, how it's now, and we want to integrate everything what is now there and uh, developed a new master plan and a new ski resort. As I told before, we want to keep the core attraction, that's the free ride paradise. We will keep it and we, we want to uh, invest in other attractions to bring more people to the mountain. That is our biggest goal. With our technical team, we developed a uh, first master plan for the Popova Shapka. As you can see on the picture in blue, that are the existing slopes. We want to integrate them, and then we want to uh, make the whole new slopes in red. And we are going on the northern part to develop the whole uh, ski resorts. Also, you can see the hotel area, the chalets area, and cross country, but I will speak in detail a little bit later about that. As I told before, we want, uh, we want to build uh, new ski slopes, 16 at all, uh, four for blue one, that's the level. Uh, the level blue is for the beginners, so it's also in the beginner area. Then we have eight red slopes and for black slopes, the black slopes are for the experts, so we think that the blue one and the red one are most important for Popova Shapka. Also, if we are going to develop new ski slopes, we have to develop new chairlifts, new ropeways. In total, we want to build new, uh, nine new lifts that in the first phase we will do two of them. Um, now you can see the master plan with the uh, hotels and the uh, shells and the restaurants as a, and also for the lakes. In the first phase, we want to build the snowmaking. As Mr. Gumla told you before, it's very important for us ski resorts to have the artificial snowmaking systems. We want to make the full automatically system with the snow gun, sticks, pump station, and also our software. 
the newest software Atlas Pro. That's very important for us key result because we plan to work more than 100 days on Pop of Shapka and, and uh, if we want to do that we need the snow making systems to guarantee that we can open at the beginning of December and close um, until March. Also to have the best slopes we need also snow groomers. For the beginning we want to invest in, in two snow groomers, at the end it will be seven on site. As Mr. Gumo told you before, for uh, to make snow we need water and air, so that's the reason why we are going to invest into, into reservoirs. Uh, for the winter season we will use it for the snow making systems to make the snow and in the summer, as you can see in the picture on the, on the left side, it's, uh, we will use it for the summer attraction. Also we are going to invest in cross country, not only in ski, and sleigh ops, so, so we will in, uh, invest also in, in the construction of 15 kilometers of new cross-country ski trails. It's also important to give the client more opportunities on the mountain. Um, for the first phase, we want to build new, uh, two new four stars hotels, and in the whole project we have four, four of them. And we want to reuse also the existing hotels, uh, Popova, Shapka, and Slavia. That is also in our business plan. Also, we need four shelters, uh, sorry, two of them. Each, uh, sorry, the chalets, the chalets are the private chalets. I will show you on the master plan where they are. Where this is very important for us to have the private chalets close to the ski slopes because of the ski in and the ski out. And that's the reason also why we built the blue ski slopes and the red ski slopes close to the chalets. Now we, we are also to build two uh, mountain shelters with uh, 116 seats per each. Also we need the takeaways with the pizzeria because we are located in Italy, in Italy, so we need a pizzeria also on the mountain and uh, construction of a, of a hamburger takeaway is also planned. We want to um, invest also in the whole infrastructure. We need that uh, parking places are not enough right now, so we want to build three new uh, parking places and also a street to the new hotels. Uh, as we spoke before, it's also important to have not only the winter season, but also the summer season. So that's the reason why we are going to invest uh, also in Alpine coasters. It's close to, this, uh, to the lake, so that's the whole fun area for the summer. And also we are going to uh, build a mountain bike trails close to the chairlift number 12. So the chalets, it will be this side. That's very important for ski in and ski out. This is a blue slope and that's a red slope. That's very important. In this part, you can see the whole hotel area, the parking places, the two lakes what we are going to build. Also with the whole function area, here are the two um, trails for the bikes and the cross country. Uh, our, mention, our, our intention is to build the first, uh, first phase, that's a very important phase for us. We think to do it in a step of five years, to develop everything what we want to develop in the first phase, and then after that we have other six phases. That means that in total we are uh, speaking about seven phases to rebuild the whole Popova shop and to bring it to, na, to um, uh, ski resorts like in the Dolomites. So that's all from my side. If you have questions, please. And uh, we are looking forward to a successful cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we'll hear from the members of the press. First uh, on the topic, and later you may ask questions that are beyond the topic. Yes. Does only the company Techno Alpine submitted a bid and uh, was there a public call? 
a public call for tender procedure. Yes, this is based on the loan strategic investments. Everyone had the opportunity to submit bids. We received this bid from Techno Alpin that is most acceptable of all. And of course, when we make decision in the government, uh, they need to have financial possibilities, experience, but also uh, market credibility. So Techno Alpin is the only bidder on Popova Shapka. But how many companies in total have bidded? Only Techno Alpin is acceptable for strategic investors in the country. How much will this whole investment cost? This is what you heard from the investor. In the first phase, they will invest about 55 million euros, and later they will invest more than 180 million euros in total. All right, now something outside the topic. No, please, on the topic. Let's stick to the topic. Well, the minister is here. I would like to ask you regarding the disputes with uh, properties and lands that are under the the ski lifts. Uh, do you foresee to resolve this uh, disputes? And how many disputes have do you have in total? Now we are speaking about the ski lifts or for Popova Shapka. For the gondola from the city to Popova Shapka and in its surroundings. First, let me tell you that an investment without a gondola will not be a complete one. So that is why we need to construct the gondola from Titova to Popova Shapka. For now, we are negotiating to see how are we going to construct this, whether we'll use the existing one or we'll create a new one. Of course, this will be on national property and state property. And we will not use uh, the current line because it is old and it does not have the required statics. So we'll invest in a new gondola and it will be constructed on state property and on Popova Shapka. We need to construct and we need to allow investments on state property. All right. And for the guest, a question. We see that we're speaking of artificial snowmaking machines. For how many months do you plan to expand the ski season? Because for now, it only depends on the climate conditions. For the, um, why why snowmaking is became so important? Because um, all these investments, and we speak about 50 million or more than 100 million later, later on, um, um, th there is only a payback if you uh, can guarantee minimum 100, more than 100 skier days. If you are not going to up to 100 skier days, you can forget. It will not work. Uh, because the skiers nowadays are is different than in the past. They are coming for three days, five days, six days in a short time. They want to come when they have uh, time and not when the ski resort is ready. <laughs> so the ski resort has to be ready for at minimum 100 days. Yes, please. Can we ask something uh, beyond the topic? If uh, the guests agree? Before going outside the topic, I would like to tell you why are we here today. We want the public to see that we are speaking of a serious investor, an experienced investor, investor with financial possibility who want to invest on Popova Shapka. Unfortunately, we as a country did not have the opportunity to invest and to manage with one of our pearls in our country. Popova Shapka has a great opportunity for developing skiing and other sports. And that is why we requested strategic investors to invest on Popova Shapka. And that is why we have Mr. Gumerer here to present his company, to inform the public that we are speaking of a serious investment in our country. 
Thank you. Minister, the finance, the financial police several days ago submitted a report against an employee in your ministry on a high managing position that they issued a license on Drislav for destruction of hazardous va waste in Drislav, although it, Drislav did not have the appropriate equipment. They put the environment at danger. You said that you do not know who are you, who are we speaking of. So after five days, do you know who this employee is now? Did you find out? Because this person was employed in the ministry to protect the environment and now is convicted of polluting the environment, misusing the official position, and what are the sanctions that this employee will face? Whether they will be fired or else? We did not receive report from the financial police. I requested it. I was in Montreal and I requested a report from the financial police. I will sit down with them to look into the report. Of course, we will start an internal audit on this procedure to clarify it, but I will not like to mention names or surnames before receiving the necessary information. We will comply with the laws and the ministry will not have anything that is illegal. After having the whole information, I will inform you. February 2022 was mentioned some medical codes, waste uh, that was destroyed in Drisla. This is all I have, uh, but I will look into the report and I will inform you on the following steps that we will undertake as a ministry. If someone misused their position, of course, they will be sanctioned. Yes, they will be sanctioned. We'll comply with all the laws. Thank you. Uh, we'll use this to make snow, you know. Regarding Popova Shapka, we know the the problem, both the journalists and you as a representative of the Ministry of Environment and Physical Planning, whether intentionally or not, you took out Popova Shapka from the plan for protection of Sharplanina as national park. There are many problems regarding Popova Shapka you have more than 90 illegally constructed objects. Although you said that uh, you will find a solution for this, we did not see any actions. And on the other hand, there is no detailed urban plan. It is not adopted. Is this going to be just another announcement for some famous investment that will not be successful throughout the years? First of all, of course, the investors have and regarding the expropriation part, have you informed them? Let's start with the illegally constructed object. Objects. Uh, they are in the part of the chalet, chalets. The, the master plan that you saw refers to beyond this area. I will always reiterate that Illegal objects are illegal objects. The central government, together with the local self-government, must undertake actions and to resolve this, to legalize them or to destroy them. Regarding the buffer zone, yes, the buffer zone was planned to be developed as a ski center, and that is why we have this buffer zone in Popova Shapka. Regarding the expropriation, the open issues, the open disputes, this is the responsibility of the government to resolve them. And now we are speaking about strategic investors with Lex Specialis. So the urban plan will be developed by the central government within the Ministry of Transport and Communications. 
Yes, of course, with uh, the local self-government, this is for the interest of Titovo. We cannot construct anything without them. I spoke with the municipality of Titovo, with, with the mayor of Titovo. We are negotiating to complete this possibility, opportunity for investment. I, we're not speaking of a phantom idea. I did not invite Mr. Gumerer from Italy to come and to present a project without having facts. And I never promised something that is not deliverable. This is a serious idea. We are speaking of serious investments. You saw that there is a plan for investment on Popova Shapka so that we can have a ski center, regional ski center that will bring profits for the country and will open new jobs for our citizens. I did not say that uh, investment is a phantom company. Yes, but uh, you said that we are speaking pompously about an investment. No, this is serious. That's why we never spoke about this before. I will not speak about the company until we are ready to present the plans, when we will have a decision made by the government, and this is what we have now, and we'll have a business plan from the investor, then we will present it before the public. That is why we are here today. We want to show that we are serious, that the company is serious, and we will sit down and further develop the ideas, the open items, We'll speak about the agreement, and I think that by the end of January, we'll have a ready agreement to be presented before the public, and we'll have the law on assembly. But this is not far from Popova Shapka. The illegal objects are there. There are religious objects. And although people suggest me that it is not so, we know that it is. Why are you still waiting? to act on these are there opportunities as a central government to enter there to offer a solution because if we continue like this we'll continue to devastate popova shapka the idea on development of ski center is great but again you have a process without unresolved expropriation This is not connected to the investment, but of course we will support the local self-government to resolve this issue. And we want not only on Popova Shapka, but we have problems with illegal constructions throughout the whole country. And that is why we need to resolve this. We have this in Mavrovo, in Ohrid, in all other cities and municipalities in the country, unfortunately. This means that we need to support the local civil government, to provide them an opportunity and capacity to present and to ask for urban plans, to have these urban plans for the citizens to have an opportunity to build on lands that are illegal. But, of course, the idea is not to always create new laws on realization of illegal constructions. We need to support all municipalities to prepare their urban plans. When will the construction of the waterway station start in Stip? Let us first start in Skopje because we are closer to making a decision in Stip. This is foreseen to be done with EPA funds. Now we are in the procedure of applying for a NEPA project and we will inform you when we'll be ready to announce this with a tender procedure, but it is still not ready. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Dear guests, this is the end of the press conference. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.